All right, I'm going to start this episode with a quote, and here it goes. Whoever can provide the crowd with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is their victim. I put out an episode two weeks ago. It was titled Squid Game forward slash crowd manipulation. Now... The responses that I got to that I found to be interesting. You see, the purpose of that episode had very little to do with the show itself. In fact, I started the episode saying I have not watched the show because that episode was not about the show, right? The episode was about crowd psychology crowd manipulation and if you go and you listen to the entire hour of the show right more the majority of the time I actually spend discussing the crowd manipulation aspect right I talked about marketing I talk about mass movements I talked about how people unconsciously sort of act without realizing what is motivating their actions, and yet they think that they are free. I mentioned a specific individual, yeah, um, who is essentially the father of propaganda, at least in the West and how we have come to understand it. Um, And I talked about how things happen. We, as in the masses, tend to experience things that are carefully orchestrated before we're even aware of it. Everything in our lives, everything you see on the news, everything you see in the media, everything that you read that has been mass produced and mass delivered is intentional, calculated for a very specific effect. Okay? I only intended to use the the show Squid Game to illustrate said point. It's actually very clear my intentions were because it wasn't about the episode. It wasn't about the show rather or the series. Um, It wasn't. (laughs) I didn't watch the series. Um, I'm not going to haul off and essentially bash an entire show for an hour unless I'm trying to illustrate something, particularly a show that I have not seen. And I start off the episode saying, I have not seen this show. I do not intend to see this show. And this isn't necessarily about the show. It's about how it is being used to move the masses in a particular way. This podcast, that is the function of this podcast, right? To point things out that people may not see. That is the function of this podcast, okay? But interestingly enough, the majority of the comments I got, and if you were one of the commenters, please do not take what I'm about to say personally, okay? I'm trying to, once again, point things out, okay? So don't get defensive. Don't let your internal monologue you know, push you to a point where you're reacting or you get annoyed. I'm not calling you out. I'm speaking to exactly how effective these shows are. Majority of the comments were were actually people defending the show. And while you're defending a show, that was not what the episode was about. Perhaps my mistake was leading with, I have no intention of watching a show, understanding that we are in the midst of while the show is popular (laughs) and has been hyped up. Um, But I'm not one to lie. I, I don't do well with it. I, I, I have no intention. Some people had said that, you know, they enjoyed it and, you know, it served its purpose as far as illustrating the dangers of capitalism. But yes, that, that is its function, guys. Like, it, 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 it's bait. And I addressed that on the episode. I said, listen, this is being done intentionally. I really did take the time to think things through and break it down. And a lot of people seem to miss it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to, because this is, this is important. It wasn't about the show. I could give a fuck about the show. Okay. It's about how 
media outlets intentionally use illusions, images, propaganda, now known as public relations, to essentially shape our reality and drive people to make and take impulsive actions without thought while by 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 essentially manipulating their unconscious mind. I said this on that episode repeatedly. I said, "Guys, I have a background in marketing. I have a background in psychology. There are a lot I've I've I saw enough for me to not want to subject myself to viewing it. I will not view it because from what I can see, it's painfully apparent what is being done." Now, off comments, I had people message me, email me privately and confirm what I was saying, right? So they didn't publicly post this, understandably so, but they emailed me or, you know, direct messaged me on the Discord chat and basically said the same thing. You know, I I worked, you know, saying that they worked in these fields and that's exactly what it is. Um, And what I said on the episode I, I did say, I, I, I do anticipate getting some sort of pushback on this, but I also have a way of saying things that are not popular at the time, but after the fact become, like, give it a year and, and you'll come back to that episode and subsequently this episode and be like, wow, she called it. So I, I am totally okay with, you know, people, you know, sort of with, with the pushback right now, because that's kind of how it works. Case in point. Chappelle's um, stand-up on Netflix is doing, you know, well, like despite the pushback of the things that he said, I'm not saying I agree with him 100% of all, like everything that he said, but ultimately what he's saying is, you know, cancel culture is not social justice. That's what he said. And funny enough, if you scroll through <laughs> my episodes about a year ago, a year and a half ago now, I put out an episode saying the exact same thing in different ways, okay? And at the time that I said it, it was, you know, everybody was just getting canceled for breathing funny. And now we're actually getting some pushback against people just having their whole entire careers destroyed because they said the wrong things or did the wrong things. And, you know, what we're going to see going forward, particularly into 2022, is mark my words, you're going to see a lot more pushback. I promise you. I promise you, you're going to see a lot more pushback of people saying, stop trying to tell me what to say or why I cannot say this and I cannot say that. It's going to happen because we've almost swung two opposite in one direction and you, the pendulum always swings back. So I'm going to stand by what I said in, those epi- in that previous episode, the Squid Game crowd manipulation episode, because that episode is about crowd manip- manipulation. What we saw with the Squid, Squid Game show is a, was a test. That would be essentially, that, that show is essentially, we're going to look back. I promise you, I promise you. We're going to look back, people are going to look back on that show and say, that's what started all of this. So I'm going to echo some sentiments that I made in that episode where I said, for example, the shoes, the white vans, the white slip-on vans that caused us what is 7,800, 7,800% increase in sales for vans. You think they did that by accident? They weren't generic slip-ons, they were specific they were very specific to vans, guys. That was not by accident. There, are, there is a there is a small group of people, very small group of people. It sounds what I'm about to say sounds quote conspiracy theory, ish. But of course, even that word or those words conspiracy theory together are meant to discourage any sort of out the box thinking. It's just another way of controlling thought of engineering consent. Okay, so everything that I'm saying right now, it's 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 going to sort of click for you, and it's going to make sense. Okay, when they, 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 there there's a small group of people 
they consider themselves uh, intellectual elites, is what they call themselves, the intellectual few, the intelligent few, okay, um, who believe that they have been tasked with manipulating the rest of us. Their, their sort of ideology, their philosophy is, hey, what is the average, I'm not making this up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cite exactly where what I'm saying is coming from, and then I'm going to strongly encourage you to do your own reading, okay? Um, as I always do, don't I? Yeah? There, we are, we've been primed, right? If I say Illuminati, we think of hooded figures, you know, in, in woods, you know, worshiping uh, giant owls. I would bet money that that was done for show, right? First stage. The analogy that I used in the Squid Game uh, episode uh, was, podcast episode, was think Wizard of Oz, right? Lots of theatrics, right? To, to scare the mind, okay? To trigger the unconscious of individuals so that you react in fear and superstition. We're all, we're, we are likened. So in the previous episode to this one, which not that many people listen to, I think because it started out kind of heavy. I, I, was, I was discussing um, sexual assault, but please go and actually give that episode a full listen. I, I just, it, it's actually very, uh, it's a very good episode, <laughs> if I do say so myself. And it, the whole entire hour isn't all about, you know, sexual assault. So take in the things that I, I discuss with an open mind. The, the, the information does need to be listened to. Um, but I, I talked about sort of lichens and how human beings are composite entities. Yeah, I believe that was the episode I talked about it. Um, I'd mentioned it previously as well, and I'm going to sort of reiterate again on this episode. We are essentially composite creatures, right? We have this you know, consciousness, right, that never dies, right? But we are in a body that is influenced by so many, you know, factors, right? Like bacteria by, maybe I didn't, did I mention it? I don't know. If I didn't still watch, you know, listen to that episode. <laughs> um, but there, there's so many elements that sort of like com, com, um, comprise the human being that we're not just one, right? Um, we're, we're not just one entity, okay? Um, even down to our brain, you've got the left brain and the right brain and <laughs> that, you know, the left brain is, is, you know, vocal. And that's what essentially some, some, uh, neuroscientists are, have said that that is what causes our internal monologue, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're just sort of this like composite creatures in a way. Um, and one of the aspects of us is this primitive sort of animal, um, nature, right? So we're gods that are sort of bound to form, bound to half man, half beast, half God. That That is what we are in this reality, right? Or in the simulated reality, okay? There, people who pull the strings in our society understand that if you can trigger that bestial nature in the mind, if you can speak directly to the unconscious in a subliminal way, you can control individuals, right? And if you can control the masses, right? If you can control the herd, then you have power, right? And they use things that are sort of our default settings that they know that we have very little defenses against, right? If you're unaware of things that are being sort of like subliminally uh, influenced on an unconscious level, <laughs> then you, you have very little control. I can control you if I kind of can float below your consciousness, your conscious level and, and sort of do things to trigger your unconscious, right? By using subliminal messaging, by flashing lights, using specific colors, putting things in the peripheral, in your peripheral vision, which I'm telling you is being utilized. What I was saying, it, it, it just certain color schemes, things like that, flashing lights, they use that hardcore on the show. I saw enough. I'm not going to sit. I don't need to sit and bitch. I don't care what the storyline is. There are beautiful stro stories, guys, that I can ob obviously read that basically send the same message, if not, you know, better. Okay. I don't need to subject myself to that level of unconscious programming. That is what is occurring. And what I said in that episode is until there, it, it is legal until enough people become conscious of it and then be like, holy shit, wait a minute, this isn't right. Then they put out a law 
And so until, <laughs> but it, but this thing is floating on an unconscious level, it's going to be, I promise you, at the very least 10, 15 years before there's a law against what we're seeing happen. And we're going to see more of it because why? Why not? Don't miss the point, guys. Everything that I say, it does come from a place of compassion and it comes from a place of love. I don't castigate for no reason. I don't chastise for no reason. I Even when I'm, it seems like I'm being critical and negative, it's coming from a place of love. I want to make you guys aware of certain things. Okay? Okay. If I can get you... So the, one of our weaknesses... For a lot of people, you might be an exception, I don't know. But for a lot of people is sort of the herd, groupthink, right? There is this pressure that we sometimes feel that is hard to fight against. No matter how independent a thinker you think you are, if you are in a crowded place and you see a handful of people start running, before you can even think, you'll start running too, Okay. If you walk into a situation and the the entire crowd, like you're in in a room, in a crowded room, and everybody turns and looks at you, that's unnerving. You're going to feel some type of way. If there's so many people, if there's enough people doing something, or you're being told that enough people are doing a particular thing, or a certain amount of people are doing a certain thing, it is very hard to fight against that. And we are seeing that being utilized against us even right now. It doesn't have to be the truth, mind you, okay? You just have to think it's true. And the people who control the media outlets and things of that nature, they don't operate under the same levels of morality that the rest of us do. In fact, these people, because they're intellectual elites, and, and, and I'm telling you everything that I'm saying, I will provide Actually, I'll do that right now. I just didn't want to lose my train of thought. Start. There's a book, I will mention it again, called Crystallizing Public Opinion by Edward Bernays. Just the intro itself, just the intro itself would have you take a step back and be like, oh, okay, I see what she's talking about. Okay, so I'm not pulling everything that I'm saying right now out of my ass. Um, That's just one book. I will mention other books as well, but just that one is just so that you know that everything that I've been saying for the last like 17 minutes, I'm not just making up, okay? And Crystallizing Public Opinion was written by Edward Bernays, who was the individual that I mentioned in the the episode two episodes ago, the Squid Game slash uh, Crowd Manipulation podcast, where of all of the comments, only one individual, one person, one woman, Ask me, who was the individual that she mentioned? Who was the man that she mentioned? Only one person. Everybody else was like discussing the show, but only one person asked, who is this man? Who is this man that created, that wrote the book, literally wrote the book on propaganda? And I commend her for it because that's the right question. That's the right question. Okay. So we have little defenses against that. We're, 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 we are seeing that in play right now. It has been in play for a long time. And Edward Bernays wrote the book on propaganda literally a hundred years ago, a century ago, okay? And, and, and the powers that be, these intellectual elites, they're not boogeymen, Right. In fact, they they want you to think that they want you to think that it's, you know, Satan worshipers or I don't care even if they if that is the religion that they practice or even like lizard people. Because if you put (laughs) if you put the sense of mystery, you sort of elevate them, then they're not just idiots. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. They're not just arrogant idiots who feel that they are better than us simply because maybe they were born into the right circumstances, right? Had access to the right schools because they, you know, had maybe born into like wealthy families and had the right connections, yeah? Exposed to the right literature, right? So just from the luck of being born into a a persona, which I discussed in this previous episode, um, 
woman, you matter, about how our bodies are just our bodies, right? It's, we're all equal, every single one of us, whether you have a female body or a male body, on the, on the underlining sort of foundation of it all is consciousness. And in that regard, we are all equal. But these individuals, a small group of people wearing human suits, just like you, they're not better than you. But somehow, because they have money or have access to, you know, the right schools or were born into the right families or the right, you know, countries or whatever, they have determined that they are part of the intellectual elite who move in silence. But they're really just typically old white men. It is what it is. Verifiable first chapter, crystallizing public opinion by Edward Bernays. Uh, it's actually the, you can listen to the audio version. That's what I'm referring to. Um, and it was written by Bernays. However, the intro, let me pull that up. If, let me see if I can find it. Um, no, it doesn't say. But I don't know who wrote the intro, but I'm, I am referring to the audiobook version and you can you can let's see here try to pull it up to see who if there's anybody who would okay it says introduction by Stuart Ewen E W E N okay so everything that I'm saying right now go and read the book I'm not pulling this out of my ass these are just individuals they move in silent they have the little organizations they know what to do they know how to control people but it's not anything mysterious it's not anything ma magical it's literally just psychology they just happen to have access to the books to the knowledge that granted them the power and because they have access to the knowledge they now have claimed power onto themselves that define themselves as ubermensch right and have, are now essentially dealing in reality in the sense of a direct quote by edward bernays we don't deal in images we deal in reality i'm going to rephrase that so you could understand what's really being said here we don't sell images we sell reality. We sell very specific forms, very specific perceptions of reality. There's no Illuminati, just a bunch of rich assholes, right? Who think that they are smarter and have thus been tasked to shape reality in the way that they see fit because what else? They've bought everything. And now the game, right? It's like it's like The Sims. Ever, ever play The Sims and use the rosebud cheat code too much? <laughs> and after a while, you go, okay, fine. I'm bored. I bought up everything. I bought the house. I bought the cars. I, you know, I don't have to get a job. I don't have to work for a living anymore. Now what do I do? And then you just start doing fucked up things because, well, what else is there to do? So then you, you right? You start controlling people. You start using other cheat codes because, yeah. The sort of mundane sort of routine of everything that the most of us are subjected to has now been sort of taken away. If you take the average person and, th and, and they say, oh, the average person, this is in the book, Crystallizing Consent. This is a direct quote from Edward Bernays. And he says it in with glee, seems like, okay? And he basically says, did you know that the average person has only an IQ of only 100? So I guess because the average person has an intelligent quotient of only 100, they deserve to be controlled and manipulated, right? You're, you're, you are superior to them, right? Because the... the <laughs> Right, because a person's ability to pass a specific test or inability to pass a specific a specific test, a culturally specific test, right, and your ability to pass a culturally specific test because you're more ingrained in that culture somehow makes you superior to them and thus should make them susceptible to your domination. That's what I'm hearing. And he said this, it's published. I'm telling you where you can go and hear this yourself. But if you take set average individual of 100, you know, IQ points or whatever, but you put them in the same circumstances, 
right? That a Bernays or a Bezos or a Gates or a Zuckerberg were placed in. I don't I doubt that they would test at a hundred. Right? My guess is they would test higher than uh, than a hundred, right? If you take a person and you put them in all the best schools from you give them all the best foods, all the best minerals, all the best exposures to music and encyclopedias and tutors and nannies, right? Private schools, things of that nature. They don't test at a hundred IQ points. They test at 130. Right? But what we're saying is that there's, this is a spin is for an individual and you see these sort of indiv- individuals, they kind of pop up, right? You had Darwin and things like that. They're, they're typically men and I'm not an anti, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I love men. I love women. I have specifically, specifically stated, particularly in the last episode, that it's just a body, okay? But I have to speak to what is going on right now. I'm not going to censor my words. I'm also not going to edge my words. I'm going to say what I have to say. We live in a society where a particular demographic of people get raised or have access to specific things that the rest of the, you know, the rest of the country does not, the rest of society does not. And then as a result of their upbringing and, and their sort of the benefits that fate has bestowed upon them because of whatever their consciousness, whatever form their consciousness happens to sort of embody at the present time has is sort of fed their ego into making them think that they are now superior to us. Look, if you take the average person and you t- even if they didn't have all of that, all the things that I mentioned, right? Nannies and tutors and all that growing up, but you, you don't have them literally working to just fucking survive, to just fucking eat, right? You, you, you give them, you, you just pull an average person from the street, not like a homeless person, but just like an average person just walking down the street and you give them a home and you say you don't have to, and you provide them food, clean, healthy water, clean, healthy, organic food, vitamins, take all of this, right? And then just say, hey, read, listen to audiobooks, Right? You just encourage them to do that, right? literally, because they have nothing else to do. That person will become intellectually superior. It's why I encourage. I think of like maybe like ten episodes ago, I said I want my I want my readers. I'm sorry, I want my listeners to be readers because you can you too can become a genius, you know, in a year, in five years, just by reading. And if you can't sit and focus and read because our fucking screens have turned us, you know, it basically is developing ADHD symptoms in a lot of individuals um, or exacerbating underlining, you know, symptoms of ADHD in a lot of individuals. This is not to take away from people who actually have ADHD. I can say that because I actually have ADHD, but we are, I talked about this, I think two episodes ago, um, and I mentioned the book, The Shallows, what the internet is doing to our brain. We're, we're, because we're constantly swiping, you know, and not sitting and focusing on something long term, those deep, beautiful grooves that are in our brains are flattening out and we're essentially becoming like we're dumbing ourselves down. We're losing our, bil- our ability to sit and focus for long periods of time, which is why I had to take a break off TikTok. While I love, you know, the fact that people are coming off of TikTok to the YouTube and to the Discord chat and things of that nature. For me, with ADHD, I found that it was exacerbating my ADHD symptoms and was also triggering some underlining sort of uh, depressive issues that I was having. Uh, I haven't been on there for three weeks and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I sound much better. (laughs) So um, just for the sake of my mental health, I had to take a break um, and just focus back on my art and painting and things of that nature. But that that's besides the point. You take the average person and you give them access, you'll find, give them access to, to education, to information, and encourage them to read. You'll find that they also, after a while, become in the part of the intellectually, you know, few, an intellectual elite or just as comparable to, right? So these lucky people somehow consider themselves elite simply by sheer luck of the draw and the circumstances that they happen to be born into. That's ego. That That's the danger of ego. Okay? So that's what's going on. We are being manipulated by 
everything. Every article you read, everything that you watch. Okay, there are a small group of people who you're not reading things. Things don't make it to the news by accident. They're, this is real. They're not boogeymen. They're not reptiles. There are people, mortals just like you and I, susceptible to sicknesses, susceptible to illness and disease. Maybe less so than the average person because they have access to the best medical care. Um, but they also have names and they have addresses. But when you sort of praise them, it's a negative praise, right? It makes them like, it makes it so that they seem more powerful than they actually are. I keep going back to the Wizard of Oz sort of imagery. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some notes off because I wanted to make sure that I addressed everything. I said, the majority of the comments on the Squid Game episode was in defense of the show about how good the show was. And I'm sure that it was enjoyable, entertaining even. But so were the gladiator arenas. So were the circuses. It's supposed to be entertaining. It wouldn't work, right? All of this subliminal bullshit that's going on underneath, like that you can't tie, put, pack that all in there if the show was boring, if it was not, you know, educational, if you didn't learn something from it, if it was not entertaining, that that is the bait, right? You have, our minds have been primed, right? Capitalism bad, capitalism evil, right? I, I, I talked about all of this, okay? That is the prime. I also even mentioned the Illuminati uh, card game, right? Eat the rich card, right? Use the wrong pronouns card. These are all in the cards. And once again, the fact that an Illuminati card game exists that has been published and, and was very popular should tell you that that is part of the narrative that's being spun, that there is a secret like organization, but these are like you know, entities that are more powerful than us. Like, oh my God. No, it's just everything's so fucking controlled. Like, that's it. They're not predicting the future, right? They're bringing it into pass. And the fact that I said this on that episode, I said the fact that these cards exist and they keep essentially being, quote, being played over and over again from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s, and they're still relevant even now, 30, 20 years later, should tell you that it's, they're not even deviating. These so-called intellectual elites aren't deviating on their plans. They just sort of build on them. So-called elites, just people who were born with silver spoons in their mouths or were lucky enough to be, have their consciousness uploaded into specific personas where they are just, it's luck. And they have, you know, defined themselves as, and I quote, intellectual few who have been tasked with cultivating and influencing the tides of history. Ah, well, thank you. Good for you. But it's intentional. Read the book. Read, read, read the book, Crystallizing Public Opinion. Find it on Audible or wherever you get your, um, you know, your audio books or whatever and listen particularly the intro. I mean, start with the intro. Everything that I'm saying right now is supported there. Okay. It is supposed to be entertaining, right? There's something called bread and circuses. Look it up. Bread and circuses. Google it. Um, media, it's meant to tame, to cajole, to appease, to pacify ultimately though to control the masses if it wasn't entertaining like i said you wouldn't watch it the bait has to be enticing in order to mask the poison okay that is the point that is the point now i want to i want to speak on the individual i'm grateful for the one you know the one person who was like who is his name who is this person who is the man that you mentioned his name was edward bernays Fuck that guy, by the way. <laughs> okay, um, there, there's there, he was amoral. There, there's just there's nothing. Um, there was just a certain shrewdness about him. He prided himself in being able to 
from the shadows. He's dead now. Um, and he got old and he died. But he, prod- he prided himself. These people, the reason why I'm mentioning that he got old, he lived to like 104, but he did eventually die. The reason why I mention that these people get old and die is to kind of, even though it seems like common sense, we once again think that these individuals are somehow above the laws of nature simply because they walk, they, well, they have placed themselves or in our minds as above, but they're still subject to being sick. Like, look at, um, well, I'm not going to mention any names. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, but you'll come back to this episode <laughs> and be like, whoa, okay. Um, so I went back and I re-listened to that episode just to make sure that how I presented the information was how I wanted to pr- present the information. And, and it was, right? The show was literally just meant, the name even in the title was literally just meant as a hook, right? So I'm I'm breaking down the illusion, so to speak, right? It was just meant as a hook. I had not, you know, I I just used it as a lead into my main subject matter, which is crowd psychology and mass manipulation, okay? And I wanted you guys to really focus more on the other things that I talked about. But I can understand why people defended the show because that's, well... That's that's the function. That's what we're talking about here. We're about to discuss. That's that at play. So Edward Bernays, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, actually he's called the double nephew because both of his parents were, um, I think, like brother and sister to uh, Freud. So double nephew to Sigmund Freud pulled from a lot of his um, research, but also on other writers, the writer's who wrote on mass psychology and crowd psychology and groupthink um, and were the predecessors. Um, so it's not just, he didn't just take Freud's you know, writings. There were other writers that I will mention towards the end of this uh, episode as well that he pulled from. And uh, I would also encourage you guys to you know, find the books and listen to them as well. Um, but his writings, he practically invented, no, he literally invented, right? our modern interpretation, modern understanding, modern usage of propaganda, so much so that his writings were used by the Nazis. And he even wrote about it almost like as something that he was kind of proud of in his autobiography, right? And he, he he said something to the effect of, yes, I'm aware that, you know, the Nazis, you know, the Third Reich used my writing, um, but, you know, it was just a tool and it's going to be used however it's going to be used, right? There was no, like, regret, no guilt associated with that because this is an individual, which is what I was trying to say in the Squid Game episode, is that once you reach a certain point, I know how these people think, once you reach a certain point, you really do just kind of place yourself above morality, above, um, not saying that this is a bad thing, Okay, but if you if you don't have your ego in control or in check, then really there is no they straight up just there's no okay, this is a bad thing and this is a good thing. It's just this is a thing and it's something that I wrote and I made a lot of money doing it and this is what I think about it and I don't care what you think or how you think of this. It is what it is. Right. But under normal circumstances is a powerful place to be. It's a powerful stance to take um, if your ego is not running the show. Right. If you have sort of subdued and subjugated the ego and you're not working from a place of trying to literally try to control people. But this is like the complete opposite. Right. Like where you could tell the ego is totally in control because the ultimate goal here is domination of masses of people. So his writings were used by the Nazis. His writings were used by the CIA to topple governments. He sold cigarettes, cancer sticks, even at the time when they knew, like there was evidence that started to come out. He knew, he knew, okay, I'm going to tell you how he knew. Evidence started to come out that cigarettes would cause cancer back in the 90s, and he's, or I'm sorry, 1920s, and he still created a whole, like he staged a protest. I'm going to say this four times 
just so you can understand that a lot of his tactics are being still used today. He staged a protest. Remember I said about the about the uh the show like it's here's the bait, right? Capitalism is bad. Here is a show that says, you know, rich people are evil and you know, money is e- okay, fine. Because I mean, who's not going to want to watch that? Majority of people are going to watch that because they've been primed with that mindset. I'm not saying that capitalism is not evil. I'm saying though, at this present moment in time, we've had that ideology primed for like in our minds. Okay. So that is the bait. Yeah. Just like a protest, right. For women's rights. Yeah. Is the bait to draw people to said protest. And then he sold them, he sold them cigarettes as what he called freedom sticks, I believe. What did he call it? Freedom something. Freedom torches? He's fucking stupid. Anyways, he, he marketed them. He pushed them as a symbol of feminism. And the reason why I know that he knew how dangerous it was is because there were reports that his wife started smoking or his wife would smoke. And even publicly, he would take her cigarettes and break them in half and throw them away. Why? Because of cl- he, he clearly knew of the danger. So it, it, it was wrong for his wife to use them, even though he was essentially the one successful enough to push her, his wife to use is so fucked up and weird, right? But these are the intellectuals, right? The intelligent ones that are fit, that you know, somehow fit to steer the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, um, he did that. He 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 staged a protest and then sold women cigarettes while stopping, attempting to stop his wife to from smoking. Okay, um, he is the reason. He is the reason why most people associate eggs and bacon with a hearty American breakfast, all American breakfast. He's the reason why if you have eggs for breakfast and bacon for breakfast, as opposed to just coffee and toast, a very light breakfast, which now they're starting to find out like intermittent fasting and and having, you know, like even skipping breakfast in some cases actually prolongs your life. Right. Um, in the writings of Nicholas uh, Talib, which completely unrelated, you don't have to go read his book, but he said that he works out and then eats. He doesn't just eat first thing in the morning. Great point. And he, the reason why he said it is because it's only human beings that don't have to work for their food. Every other animal body, right, any other animated form, right, has to chase its food, exercise first, right, and then eat, but we wake up and eat first and then exercise. So he's a big believer in sort of working out first and then eating. Interesting perspective. But um, yeah, the reason why people, majority of people, when you say, hey, what do you want for breakfast? They automatically think eggs and bacon. So you're just doing shit, don't even know what you're, why you're doing something. And that was because of one man. Yeah. He wrote the book on engineering consent. Wrote the book on compliance. They, they call it crowd compliance. The, they actually, to kind of dress it up, they called it the compliance profession. So after his works were used by the Nazis after the, the wars... Um, He decided, you know what, Mm, propaganda, the word propaganda has become sort of uh, kind of a touchy word, right? Because the Nazis literally used it. (laughs) Um, He thought, okay, let me take the techniques of propaganda, but then rebrand it in a more digestible term. And so he changed propaganda to public relations, literally Public relations PR firms are just remove the PR and just call them propaganda firms because that's exactly what they are. You this is you can duck duck go this, you can bing this, this is this is Googleable. Okay. He rebranded his propaganda techniques as public relations. So anytime you see anything about PR, public relations, all that is 
is essentially it's propaganda. Okay, I'm going to read you a quote from him. Here it goes. The democratic system allows a pluralism of propaganda, while fascist systems only allow one single official propaganda. That's how he thought. So keep that in mind. We live in a quote, I quote, heavy quotes, democratic society, whatever the fuck that means now. Okay. Particularly when you have hidden figures sort of in the background, shadow individuals manufacturing particular outcomes. I said this to one of my friends. I said, in order for the United States to, to keep its brand as the land of the free, you, you have to present people the illusion of choice. That is the thing. So, so, and it, it also helps for our image in, you know, in the world as well. No, this is a land of the free. But the way they go about it is that they say, you have the choice. You have the choice to make this choice or this choice. But then they use the media to shepherd you into essentially forcing you into making a particular choice. They use like crowd psychology. They use the, the herd mentality. They say, oh, 85 you know, percent of people are doing this now, right? They say, you've got to tell these people to do this, to, to, to take this action, okay? So th- and, and these are unconscious. Okay, I said it earlier at the beginning. Um, unconscious drives that people, many people have very little, very little, very little resistance against. And they have been, they have had a century. You haven't even heard of Bernays, okay? For, for the most part, most people haven't, okay? And they have had over a century, and not just Bernays, Bernays. Right? These people have had over a century to master and fine tune the same information that most people aren't even aware of, cognizant of. So how can you even have a defense against that? So they tell you you have a choice, but then they literally have firms media firms that are pumping, they're using everything. They're using grassroots movements, they're using protests, they're using word of mouth that you think is word of mouth, but it's where are these sources coming from? They're infiltrating, I talked about this in previous episodes, they're infiltrating Reddits, they're using bots, they're using agents. This is all, you can find all of this out. It's all there, it's all online. To basically force people to force compliance, to engineer compliance in a particular direction. And then they tell you that you're free. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's just, it only works if you don't make yourself aware of what's going on. And I said before, turn off your TV. I'm not saying like, be one of those people who just never watch TV, okay? I'm saying like even when you do consume the media, be aware that there's a lot of things that are happening that are meant to trigger your unconscious. A lot of people aren't even aware that they have an internal monologue for fuck's sake. A lot of people aren't aware that their 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 left brain is literally like driving their actions and why it does what it does. Hello, you have, we have very little defenses against stuff that is like essentially unconscious and subliminal attacks. That even if there were laws against, right, in order for something to like essentially like, okay, let's enforce the law. Like, let's say I'm a company, I decide I'm going to utilize certain psychological tactics against you know, because I, I want my customers to make particular actions, right? Right? I want to, I want to control, I, I want my clients to do something that benefits me, which is coercion, by the way, uh, in a way. It may not be like by violence, me, violent means, but you're essentially kind of making people, forcing people to do something against their 
will. Okay? If, if it's done on a subliminal and an unconscious level, how would you even, like a whistleblower, how would you even catch the person and prosecute, right? Like, like a whistleblower would have to explicitly come out and say, they were doing so and so and so and so, but it, it takes time. And more likely than not, they probably have accounted for it. And I, as I mentioned in that episode, <laughs> I even brought up like Fight Club, which it's actually a couple of people were like, I agree with later parts of the, of the, of the episode. Um, but if it's not, if it's going to be more beneficial for them to cause harm to people, if it's going to be, it's going to make them more money in the long run, uh, they'll take the chance. Because once again, these individuals see themselves as elite and us as chattel. As long as they they meet their bottom line. You have very little defenses against it. And even if even if it were illegal, going about proving <laughs> right, charging, the least the, the, maybe they maybe they get a fine. They've set money aside for that. So the only defense against this is to make yourself aware of it. So when I say like you gotta turn off the TV, even when you you know watch shows just be mindful of the fact that like you could be watching this has happened i've seen this i've caught this happen where you're watching something and then something flashes i mean more and more you're able to kind of freeze i saw actually this happened with the trump campaign um years ago he they put out a video it's like a it looks like like an ad and um and it was like an official ad because i i went and searched for it. it was an official ad um, but every once in a while, they would like intercut um, images of like Miley Cyrus, like with her tongue out. It was weird. And most people didn't see it. But then if you read the comments, a lot of people are like, wait, did you see that? And then pointed out to it. And then you slow down, you could see it. And you would think something would come from it or come of it. Nothing ever came of it. And I'll never forget that. Um, I've seen also people who like, literally, this was like back in the day when you had those flip phones and this one lady was like recording something on like just on her little flip phone. And then like, just by accident kind of turned her camera towards like the, the news. And then it was like a boom, like just a blip. I don't remember what the word said, but it was something. And she like, was like, this is it. And you could tell, like, she was like, I'm not making this up. It's here. It's on my phone. I can't. I don't have the capabilities to like, why would I make this up to even like, but she was like, this is what, I don't know what it's, I don't know if it's a kill or something like, it was just something that was disturbing enough. Um, So just understand that while we think we have like certain protections to like stop corporations um, or even governments from doing certain things, that's all, that's all illusion. And I guess I'm, you know, as I said in the beginning of the quote, you know, don't don't victimize me for pointing out the illusion, but I need you to understand that it's all illusion. That's all that that we are all we are controlled by illusions. I I can sit here and point out all the different illusions that we are under, but I'm not going to, because um, uh, you you can figure it out if you think about it. Um. At least I won't on this episode, maybe in another episode. Um, But yeah, so this guy worked for the U.S. government and then he switched and started working for uh, corporations, right? So he hired himself out uh, in order to teach corporations to engineer consent, Um, both corporations and government agencies. I mentioned the CIA, Um, but he provided them with tools to control and regiment the masses according to their will and without their knowledge about it. That is a direct quote. I'll say it again. This is a direct quote. He provided them, corporations and government agencies, with the tools to control and regiment the masses according to their will and without their knowledge about it by controlling the unconscious mind. Okay? His list of clients included, I had to write this down, um, the U.S. War Department, one of his first clients, um, the Nazis, who were not his direct clients, but used his book. Like literally, I think his name was like Joseph Godel or something like that. This was like an actual like Third Reich officer. He 
said he used his book. These are facts. And they used it against the German people um, and against the world during uh, their campaigns. Okay. General Electric, Procter & Gamble, American tobacco companies, media outlets, and politicians. He used his techniques to sell, for example, disposable cups, right? Convincing the general public that only disposable cups were sanitary. We're seeing a lot of that happening right now. Did all this just to make money. And like I said before, they have had over a hundred years to master and fine tune these techniques. You could say, oh, well, it would be illegal, even if it were. Like, first, you have to be able to like point it out that it's happening. And two, like, how, who are you going to arrest? Right? They issue a fine or they issue an apology and they say, oh, we're not going to do that again. But then they do something else. Or they admit, yes, we are intentionally manipulating the masses to get them to be addicted to our product. They admit it right there on television. And nobody does a goddamn thing about it. I'm talking to you, Facebook. I'm talking to you, Instagram. What the, like you guys really need to sit with that that they intentionally constructed their products in a way that they are addict, they're uh, addictive by nature, right? With the lights and the notification and the constantly, they know this, guys. Should it be illegal to intentionally like sell a product, market a product? I don't know. Maybe 50 years from now, we'll look back and go, that was really bloody stupid. But right now, we're all addicted. <laughs> so mm, it is what it is. He described the masses as irrational and subject to herd instinct. And he outlined how skilled practitioners could use crowd psychology, uh, psychology rather, to control people in desirable ways. Desirable ways. Those are his words. He said things like, knowledge of the psychology of the crowd is the last resource of a politician. Been a hundred years, guys. Other books I would like you to check out, The Crowd by Gustave Le Bon, which influenced his writings. Um, And he was also the quote that I started with. He wrote the quote that I started with at the beginning of this episode. Crystallizing Public Opinion by Edward Bernays is another book. Um, Another one is, hold on one second. Uh, Public Opinion by Walter Lippmann and uh, Propaganda by Edward Bernays. Now, I'm going to leave you guys. I'm probably going to go back to our regular scheduled program <laughs> program uh, next week, I think, or maybe later this week. But I wanted to leave you guys with some quotes by Mr. Bernays. Because I said all of that, but now I want you to hear, I mean, I, I've thrown in some, some, some of his quotes like throughout the podcast, but I want you to kind of hear, you know, things that he said in his words. Okay. He said, implant an idea in a group leader's mind and let him spread it. Better to do that than to write up an idea and send it to the papers as a release in the old fashioned way. Another quote, as if actuated by the pressure of a button, people began working for the client instead of the client begging people to buy. I'm going to say that again. As if actuated by the pressure of a button. And he's not somebody who's writing like they're sorry. He's writing because, I mean, this is coming from a place of, look what I can do. As if actuated by the pressure of a button, people began working for the client instead of the client begging people to buy. You guys understand how powerful that is. People started working for the client. Another quote, if we understand the mechanism and motives of the group mind, 
Is it not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing about it? The recent practice of propaganda has proved that it is possible, at least up to a certain point and within certain limits. Another one. But instead of a mind, universal literacy has given the common man a rubber stamp. A rubber stamp inked with advertising slogans, with editorials, with published scientific data, with the trivialities of tabloids and the profundities of history, but quite innocent of original thought. Mm. Each man's rubber stamp is a twin of millions of others. I call this intellectual clones. I'll get back to that. So that when these millions are exposed to the same stimuli, all receive identical imprints. The amazing readiness with which large masses accept this process is probably accounted for by the fact that no attempt is made to convince them that black is white. Instead, their preconceived hazy ideas that a certain gray is almost black or almost white are brought into sharper focus. Their prejudices, notions, and convictions are used as a starting point with the result that they are drawn by a thread into passionate adherence to a given mental picture. Don't tell me this isn't being utilized right meow. Don't tell me this isn't being I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this again. If you can influence the leaders, this is another quote, if you can influence the leaders, either with or without their conscious corp cooperation, you automatically influence the group which they sway. I keep telling you guys, I've said this on live. Some people want to ask me, what group? Like, they want to put you in a group, right? Are you a Christian? Are you a Buddhist? What, what do you believe in? Are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? And my response is, fuck your labels. I actually had a podcast episode called Fuck Your Labels, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to reiterate, fuck your labels. See, the problem is, if you put yourself in a particular group, if you subscribe to a particular group, Somebody can come in and redefine the group and thus redefine you. Okay? For example, not too long ago, Republican Party literally were responsible for ending slavery in this country. And now it's like the complete opposite. But that's because... The leaders were influenced over time to serve whatever specific purpose, whoever these, quote, hidden people, intellectual, quote, elites, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves, needed to serve, needed us to serve, needed the, the, the public, the masses, the herd to serve, to benefit them and to allow them to shape history in a particular way. If you don't think that this is intentional, I'm going to leave you with one quote. Actually, probably seven more quotes. By Bernays. Okay, another one. The conscious and intel intelligent, sorry, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Sounds kind of innocent, right? Wait for it. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, as in unelected, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed. Our minds are molded. Our taste forms. Our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. He's talking about himself, and he's saying this with some sort of glee. This guy died knowing that he had true power and nobody knew about it, right? We live in a society where everybody's kind of encouraged to throw away our privacy and just do everything to be in the limelight, limelight right? But the people who are really moving are the ones who are doing things in the shadows silently. And the people we'd never heard of, 
the people who who we've never like there we don't know we don't know. You've heard the quote, you don't know what you don't know. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know who we don't know. He was one of them. I'm saying he. It, it's attested to just in the intro to crystallizing public opinion. Read that. We are governed. Our minds are molded. Our taste forms. Our ideas suggested. This is happening largely by men. We have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together. This is his opinion. This is his spin. This is his way of justifying what they're doing. Okay? In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated. I'm telling you everything I said Every word that I used was used intentionally. It is an intentional form of domination. They know what they're doing. We are chattel to them. Not saying that that's true. I'm saying that's how they perceive us. We are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes. The mental, that's it. Just knowledge is power. If you know how a person's mind works, this is, these are facts. If you know how a person's mind works, you can control them. If you can, and the best way you do that is start by understanding yourself. And there's plenty of books that could tell you about what you are susceptible to. Plenty of books. This book is one of them. <laughs> um, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses and PCs, right? Philosophical zombies. This is all intentional. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. That is taken from his book, Propaganda. Another quote from his book. Men are rarely aware of the real reasons which motivate their actions. Okay? Go back. If you, if you, even if you listen to that Squid, Squid Game episode again um, before, maybe go back and listen to it again. Go back and listen to it again. Because, like, you really need to understand... You really need to understand, like, yes... <laughs> Yes, the show was entertaining, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys found the series, those who did like it. Okay, that's fine. But that it's supposed to be, right? The gladiator arenas, the function of them was to entertain and to contain and to control. And they were put together by, once again, this, this has not deviated much. It's just a small group of people who feel that they deserve to shape society, to deal in reality, right? And to make history. There are invisible rulers who control the destinies of millions. It is not generally realized to what extent the words and actions of our most influential public men are dictated by shrewd persons operating behind the scenes. That is a direct quote from Edward Bernays' Propaganda. It is asked whether, in fact, the leader makes propaganda or whether propaganda makes the leader. There is a widespread impression that a good press agent can puff up a nobody into a great man. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing this? Propaganda is the executive arm of the invisible government. That's straight from his book, Propaganda. Okay. I'll leave you with one more quote. 
Two more quotes, <laughs> okay? The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitutes an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. You're going to keep, I'm keep my repeat. No serious sociologist any longer believes that the voice of the people expresses any divine or especially wise and lofty idea. The voice of the people expresses the mind of the people and the mind is made up for it by the group leaders in whom it believes and by those persons who understand the manipulation of public opinion. It is composed of inherited prejudices and symbols and cliches and verbal formulas supplied to them by the leader. I, I could go on. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and like quote the entire shit to you. Okay, I'll one more. The history of the Industrial Revolution shows how that power passed from the king and the arist aristocracy to the bourgeoisie. Universal suffrage, suffrage and universal schooling reinforced this tendency and at last, even the bourgeois bourgeoisie stood in fear of the common people for the masses promised to become king. And so how do they choose to temper that? Exactly what we're doing, what we're seeing with propaganda. Whatever of social importance is done today, whether in politics, finance, manufacture, agriculture, charity, education, or other fields must be done with the help of propaganda. Now you take propaganda, you place it with PR, public relation, media, and you, <laughs> you start to see what I'm trying to get you guys to see. I'm not saying don't watch this stuff. I'm just saying if you don't have, if you're not aware of it, if you don't have much in terms of defenses against it, like I, I'm, right now I'm in a point in my life where I'm just trying to control my internal monologue, not control it, because I don't think you can control it. I'm actually just learning to ignore it. That's actually better for me. Um, and I think I'm going to talk about that in the next episode. I just want to kind of, wanted to take this episode to kind of address, you know, the mass manipulation shit. <laughs> okay. Um, that's my focus. I, I, I'm not even at the level yet where I can like pick up on like when s certain colors might be influencing me to be hungry. These are things, you know, not to mention certain like waves or, or like the guys, like you guys, a couple people would email me about the CIA's, um, study on astral projection and, and their findings. This is out there. And how they used like certain like what is it alpha waves or whatever to like change people's fucking brain waves like this is out there this is stuff that they put out there guys like it's not like it's not that far of a stretch to imagine what what's going on that we're not even like bleh. everything is so controlled so controlled I'll leave you with this my cousin texted me he said that in, in the UK now. They now they started out with CCTV there first, and now they brought it to the U.S. And now they have speakers on on CCTV, and they like the police can like talk to you and say, "Hey, don't do that," and yell at you, right? It's fucking abnormal. Nobody's like really protesting against this shit, which is wild to me. Like everybody wants to attack the five G towers, okay? But why aren't we like upset about being monitored like that? And then you keep hearing certain plants. I'm gonna call them their plants who try to shape public opinion, right? So you get, a, you get a group of bots whose purpose is to shape and influence, right? Public opinion. And they say certain things like, well, if I have nothing to hide, then, you know, um, I'm okay with basically having no privacy. Meanwhile, the people who are really running the show, they get to keep their privacy and our privacy is being invaded. And you have these bots, these plants that they pop up on social media, they pop up on, you know, in comments or, you know, things like word of mouth. And they, they kind of say things like, this is a normal fucking thing to say. If I have nothing to hide, then you should be able to fucking yell at me from a camera. Who the fuck are you? Fuck you. Don't like... And at some point, I remember somebody had said the two things. 
the shit that's kind of low key abnormal to us now, if we don't do anything about it, if we don't protest against that, if we don't say, no, this is not okay. It's like you put a frog in a, in a, in a pot and you just slowly turn the heat up. Our children are going to take this shit as normal. Like that's going to be their norm for them. Somebody had said to me, when you watch, go back and you watch Black Mirror now, especially the first few episodes, a lot of the stuff doesn't seem as jarring anymore as it did when you first watched it. Like that, particularly that first episode where that blue cartoon guy, I forget what it's called, ended up like becoming like, like a president or prime minister or whatever. It seemed insane at the time. And then we had, you know, Trump. <laughs> um, and by the way, I, I am an independent so I, I kind of shit on everybody. So even that comment that I made where you can turn a, a nobody into, you know, a, a person, that quote, um, the, the Bernays quote that I just said like five minutes ago, my mind was definitely thinking of a Biden who has no reason. He has, there's no reason why he should be president right now. Like, really, that's the best that we could come up with. So fuck the both of them, just FYI. But when you go back and watch Black Mirror now, a lot of the stuff that seems so shocking and dear and, and jarring, jarring rather, like a decade ago, or however long it first came out, it seems kind of normal now. And unfortunately, we're also seeing the same thing happening with 1984, which were supposed to be sort of warnings, right, of like, maybe we shouldn't go down this path. And Brave New World, we're seeing that. And eventually, we're going to look back at these, like, on Black Mirror, and we're going to look back at 1984... And our kids and our grandkids aren't going to understand the impact that they had in society because a lot of that stuff is going to be considered normal unless we collectively start pointing out these things and saying, like, this is not okay. And and what, I'm going to say that one more time. Agents and plants, like, be careful when you think something and then all of a sudden there's a gang of people that are saying things that don't make any fucking sense because that is PR, that is propaganda. That is one of the tools. Everything that I've said on this podcast, you can search on your own. I encourage you to. I beg you to. That is one of the tools. There's a, there's articles that had come out where they're basically telling you, yeah, like there are CIA agents whose jobs are to infiltrate the media, um, social media rather, and essentially shape public opinion. So, you know, just, but that's, <laughs> that's it. You know, these are facts. All right, guys, thanks for listening.